All right, folks. We're going to start by looking at our chapter on aldehydes and ketones, and uh, it'll eventually be uh, some more reactions on our carboxylic acid derivatives. But we're going to start this by introducing some mo nomenclature for aldehydes and ketones. Now, we are going to find that, for the most part, these have a lot of similarities to all the carbonyls. Uh, matter of fact, the reactivity kind of fits in the middle of our carboxylic acid derivatives. And we are going to be able to relate that to the electronegativity of the carbon. All right, but um, we're going to see quite a diverse little uh, collection here. Now, just like um, on the previous things with our carboxylic acids and their derivatives, we will see that common names to get to be a lot more uh, um, used. So there will be IUPAC names and there's going to be common names. And on this page, I just got various different uh, carbonyl containing compounds that are aldehydes and or ketones. Okay, nomenclature is actually kind of simple at first because um, we, we can get away with just what we've been doing in the past with the IPUC and we're just going to drop the E and put an AL there. So this with one carbon is actually allowed to be called methanol and two carbons can be ethanol. And one, two, three, propanol. And we're going to assume that's at one, so the bromine's at two, giving us two bromo propanol. However, on all three of these, there are common names that are perfectly um, acceptable as an I, they are IUPAC approved. So along with methanol, this is also known as, you probably have heard of this one, formaldehyde. And ethanol, excuse me, and uh, the propanol, both actually have common names as well. Um, and they are related to those names that we've used in the, uh, um, with our carboxylic acids. So like the uh, butyl group here will be um, butyrol aldehyde. All right, but I'm just going to stick with our IPUC names because I just don't have enough room to write all of them on this one. So I got number one, two, three. So this one will be three chloro butanol. And this is actually going to be three methyl butanol. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, well, they gotta be because they're on the end. So this is gonna be hexane dial. Now hexane dial also actually has its own little name. And if we go back to the previous uh, uh, chapter, we knew if these were OHs, that was a diptych acid. And it could be curled up on itself and make a ring and make a diptych anhydride. Well, hexan, hexane diol is also acceptably called adiptaldehyde. That needs to be cleaned up. I lost a letter in there. Adiptaldehyde. All right. Um, primarily, though, we can get away with IUPAC most of the time, but make sure you're familiar with things like this because the uh, biochemists still actually use the common names far more often. All right. When they're attached to the ring, we have a similar thing to what we did before. So cyclohexane. Carbaldehyde. No, carboxyaldehyde. I'm dropping letters. And that is the only name we use over, over on the cyclohexane. And this one could be benzene carbaldehyde.
but far more often you end up seeing bins out of hide. All right, now when we actually look at all of our functional groups together, certain ones end up taking priority over others. Like we have actually talked about alcohols and we always talked about them having high priority, but here more recently we saw that all of our carboxylic acids took priority over that. Well, ketones and aldehydes do as well. And it does kind of look like ketones are lower priority to aldehyde. We'll see that there's weird little rules that affect and then kind of group these together. But no matter what, they're above the aldehydes. Technically, you'll see all your carbonyls are, uh, get a higher priority to anything that's not a carbonyl. All right, but to practice this, we're just gonna do a few of these. And just like in the past, if you have a high, factor, high priority functional group, we're gonna number it so it has the lowest possible number. So on this first one, I have an aldehyde and I have an alcohol. Aldehyde is a higher priority. So I'm gonna number just like so. So when we actually change the alcohol to a suffix, it becomes a hydroxyl group. So this is one, two, three hydroxyl uh, butanol. Now over here we have a um, aldehyde and an ester. The ester will take priority, which does mean that that formaldehyde somehow gets turned into a substituent. All right, but what we have is we have this little methyl out in front, like all esters do, and off of the fourth carbon, I have a formal group. And then one, two, three, four. Butan O8. Now, turns out that's actually an acceptable name, but traditionally not, a, not the proper one. What we're gonna do most of the time, so I'm gonna forget that this is highlighted like your book had it, because I'm actually gonna say that's my fifth carbon and a pentanoate. And rather being a five form or four formal group, this is methyl, and then the substituent is five oxo pentanoate. That oxo is like saying there's a double bond. All right, now theoretically this other one could be an oxo as well, but we're much better off to actually have that part of our backbone, or not part of our backbone, because our backbone is longer. So this one I'm definitely gonna use that formal group. So I have an ethyl out front, and then on the fourth location, we have a formal group. And then hexanoate. All right, what is next? All right, when we have interesting ties, we are just going to be able to conclude these as part of the backbone. So while there is substituent names for a double bond and a triple bond, and they are indeed on this. So it's the y, y and E when it's the part of the backbone. It's an alki alkenol and an alkynol when it's a substituent. But when I can make it part of the backbone, I put it in the name. So this is going to be a pentene al. And since that has to be at one, I don't number it. So I could say three pentene al. And that is implying that the three applies to the ene, but also could do pent three ene al. But don't need to number the one. It's assumed to be number one because it's the aldehyde. Okay, ketones are actually a heck of a lot easier. 
because we don't do anything other than draw attention to the O-N-E part of the sub substituent or of the backbone. So this being three carbons, it is proper to call it um, pent or propanone. And I don't need to number it because it have to be in that middle location or else it would have been an aldehyde. And propanone is also called acetone. Now on this next one, I could have put the carbon in here at that second location, and since it's at the third, I will indeed name, number this as 3-hexanone. And I could have put the O and E in the middle, or the number in the middle, so hex and 3 ohm. Alright, when we have a long backbone, I want to number it so the carbonyl has the lowest possible number. So we have a 6-methyl-2-heptanone. Only one substituent, so I don't number it. Cyclohexanone. Now here's an interesting. If you think about it, as a ketone, that's the only two places I could put this. So butane dione, there really is only one way to actually call it. But anytime you have more than one own, you do actually properly number both of them. So this is 2, 3, um, butane dione or uh, buta, buta 2, 3 dione. And here it makes sense you'd have to number them because you could have put a carbon here, here. So this one definitely is 2, 4, pentadione. Now finally, I have a double bond in there. If I don't care where it's at when I number my backbone, I want the carbonyl to have the lowest possible number. So I number it as such. Now it's an enone. So it's a hex four in two own. And you will number them both. All right. There are common names that are allowed with um, our carbonyls. Now, often what we end up doing is treating these two as substituents. So a phenyl ring and a methyl ring given us methyl, phenyl, ketone. This one would be phenylpropyl. And this one has two possible simple common names. So there's just phenyl ketone and probably a little bit more honest diphenyl ketone. But these are two words. There's a there and three words here, three words here. So it's separated out. But those are definitely common no, names. Now on this first one and the last one they have additional common names. Like this one is also known as acetophenone. And this one over here is actually known as benzophenone. And while those are common names, they're also IUPAC names. And just to complete it, if I were to uh, name these as um, IUPAC, um, I'm going to name this as uh, an, an uh, ethanoe, uh, ethan, ethanoone. So I have a 1-phenyl and then ethan one own. This would be a butanone, so one phenyl. Butan one own. And this one doesn't really get anything that simple like that. I guess it could be a methanone, but we don't see it ever named that way. Benzophenone is its name. 
All right. Um, when we have more than one, or when the ketone is a substituent, uh, either one of those, you're going to use an oxo as a substituent name. So all of my other carbonyl um, derivatives, so carboxylic acid derivatives, do take priority. So they will be one compared to a ketone. And we just number the rest based on that. And that just becomes an oxo substituent. So this is for oxo uh, pentanal. This is methyl because of that. Methyl. And then three oxo uh, butanoate. And five oxo. Hexanamide. Okay, next thing we're going to do is start looking at the reactions. I'm going to do that in a second video. So um, we're done with our nomenclature now. Look for part two to get uh, our reactions covered.